The North American model of wildlife conservation is the guiding principle for wildlife management in North America. There are seven pillars which guide this model, which I'll describe in a separate video. Recently in Michigan, pillar six, which is science is the proper tool to discharge wildlife policy, has recently been violated by the Natural Resources Commission, otherwise known as the NRC, who caved to perceived public pressures and closed three months of coyote hunting season with no scientific backing. I needed to understand better how this would affect hunters and anglers in the state of Michigan, where I grew up. So I talked to the staff at Michigan United Conservation Clubs, MUCC, to clarify the issue. In this three-part episode, we will learn how this affects not only Michigan, but potentially the rest of the North American continent. Amy Trotter is the Chief Executive Officer of MUCC, and she lays out why we cannot manage wildlife based on public perception. There is a proposal before the Natural Resources Commission to actually shorten the coyote season through the period of April 15th through July 15th. Previously, and since 2016, we've had a year-round season here in Michigan for coyotes. And the reason being is because MUCC, and along with a lot of other hunting and trapping groups, advocated for that. We supported it because we wanted to have the most tools in the toolbox for wildlife management that we could. And unfortunately, the Natural Resources Commission chose shows public perception rather than biological science as a reason to justify closing it during that April to July period. So obviously MUCC disagrees with this change that was just put forward by the Natural Resources Commission. We are actually taking action to file an appeal on that decision. Um, we've filed the, that in Ingham County just this week. Um, in a parallel uh, transaction, the Michigan Trappers and Predator Callers Association has also filed a, filed a very similar appeal in Mackinac County. Um, this is going to take time, though. We're, we're now requesting the administrative record of the decision so that we can see basically what went into the Natural Resources Commission decision and also what might not be there. This is way bigger than coyotes for us here in Michigan because the commission in taking this action said that public perception was more important than sound scientific management. They weighed that public perception piece much more strongly. And they didn't even give any evidence about the public perception. They didn't have any data to back that up either. That was all just uh, assumptions uh, and, and reaction to, you know, a handful of people. So what does that mean? You know, there's a lot of things that hunters and trappers do that are perhaps unpopular. Baiting, for instance, for bears. Running hounds. Trapping in general, you know, all of those things to the non-hunting public or the anti-hunting public are extremely divisive. You know, those are things that people don't understand. You know, I had the opportunity to go to Trapper's College and learn in depth for a whole week about the tools of trapping and how scientific it is, how, how precise you have to be and how you really have to get in the mind of these animals. So hunters and trappers get it, but the outside public absolutely doesn't. And again, we don't care, we shouldn't care when it comes to wildlife management about the motivations of individuals. Like, I don't care if they want the fur for a fur coat or if they're going to sell the fur. I don't care, you know, if they're going to eat the meat or if they're going to give it to someone else. There's there's all these things that, again, those are public perceptions. That's not how we should manage, though, our population. Public perception varies. It, it varies based on your own personal values, your upbringing, your experiences. And that's the whole reason for Proposal G from 1996 is that we wouldn't base wildlife management decisions on public perceptions, but instead on sound scientific management data that suggests, uh, you know, again, what we should be doing, how to not harm the resource, how to provide maximum opportunity for hunting, trapping, and also all the tools in the toolbox for wildlife management. I mean, the Disney mentality of the general public is concerning because they do treat every animal as an individual in an individual life. And we know it's a renewable re resource. Um, we know that in 42 other states, they're hunting doves 
but not here in Michigan. And that's because of public perception it has nothing to do with biology. It has nothing to do with migration. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, their population or timing or anything. And it has everything to do with a public vote in 2006. And that is unfortunate. And again, we, we've we talked about that a lot here. Uh, doves, you know, will they ever get to be hunted in my career? I hope so. Uh, but it is hard to overcome when there's been a public vote um, on, on a species that somehow, again, due to public perception that they're, you know, a, a biblical symbol or a symbol of love or whatever, uh, that's what's driving the dove vote. They think, pe some people think they're too small to eat, they're too small to be, you know, uh, to be a game species, but so are teal, and they're delicious. Yeah, there was a couple different hunting groups that were supportive of this closure. And, you know, again, we disagreed with them vehemently on this, but I would liken it to say they believed it was important to cut off the toe to save the foot. They believed that there was threats coming from the legislature. It's still unclear to me what those threats were of, of losing some other authorities, but they said that they couldn't justify having a year-round hunt on a population when, you know, again, all the tools were in the toolbox. We can't trap during that period already. We can't run hounds during that period already. But they just felt that it was going to somehow save us from future threats by saying if we give if something up now, we'll be able to continue other things throughout the rest of the year. I do believe on this particular issue, the the hunters and trappers who believed this was the right thing to do are in the minority. The vast hunting and trapping public are with us, that they thought this closure was inappropriate. So I do want to, you know, it's not as divisive as it may seem. We have a difference of opinion, um, but that group that, uh, you know, supported this is is a small minority, I believe, of the hunting public. And really, it's, it's all about, again, we do want to address those public perceptions in the most positive way, but not through regulations. I think there is uh, still a lot of uh, confusion about what someone can do if the, a coyote is doing or about to do damage. And that's unfortunate because now we have kind of a law enforcement nightmare. So what I would hate to see happen, but probably will, is that someone reasonably wanted to control the coyote population on their grounds, but you know, maybe there wasn't an immediate or imminent threat of coyotes, and they get a ticket. And so it's also taken the tool out of the toolbox for all the public land hunters. So now people who, again, may live adjacent to public land or just want an, another opportunity during a period of time when there's not a lot else to do in terms of hunting opportunities, you know, they, they were using that time, again, to control the population to improve their deer herd in their local area, whatever it might be, and they've lost that opportunity. So I, I am concerned about the domestic conflicts, the local conflicts. We do still have nuisance control opportunities there, but again, it's a gray area if you're doing it on uh, someone else's property or if you don't own livestock or pets. So we do need to be good champions of how we use social media, the appropriate, you know, what we're sharing, uh, at getting people in the field and understanding what we do better and and not maybe abruptly or or in a way that turns them off. So we do have to be cognizant of R3 and and how we bring more people into our sports and and do it in a way that meets them where they're at and do, you know, sensitive to that. But again, that's not a regulatory thing. That's just how we as hunters and trappers should be operating in terms of sharing our outdoor heritage. Again, uh, what what do we need as MUCC? We need members and we need donations. Um, that's really what gets these kinds of things done. The the mechanisms that anti hunting groups have is cash and lawyers, <laughs> and uh, both of those things uh, require people to give, to give generously, to to understand that we will be good stewards of their money, that we're not being frivolous here. We do believe that there is a case to be made, and again. Um, even win or lose on this case, it's about preventing these kinds of things from happening again because we are really trying to send a message that public perception is not the way that we should be managing wildlife. 
Thanks for checking out this episode of the Aptitude Outdoors podcast. If you would like to get involved, head over to MUCC.org and support them in this fight to preserve the North American model of wildlife conservation.